Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Xenosaga Episode 3, and more database reading! I know you've all been looking forward to it. We're actually at 70% of the total! Amazing! I don't know how long this is going to take, but it's probably going to take a while. Alright, characters! Albi. The miniature albino dog that Junior began to keep on the bridge of the Durandal after the death of Albedo. He's an albi he's an albino, so he's Albi, is the reason Junior gave for the name, although it also suggests lingering thoughts of Albedo. The dog is very friendly towards Junior and Xion, but stubbornly continues to dislike Guinan. Hmm, I wonder why. Abel The boy couldn't find with within the Consolidated Advanced Technology Testing Ground, where the Zohar project is being conducted. He is the exclusive pilot of Omega, but the chain of events leading up to that are veiled in mystery. Afflicted with a psychological condi condition akin to autism, he is unable to communicate normally and is able to achieve the partial transmission of his will only through the use of the same UMN support system used to com communicate with Sakura. Bunny! A caricature of a rabbit, well known across all regions of the galaxy, said to be originally the creation of a children's book author from the planet Tessadora in the TC 4630s, but the facts are uncertain. As a result, the characters of the character's ambiguous copyright status, a variety of industries have used its cuteness to sell merchandise, creating a mass of wealth. The character is just as po popular even now, in the later half of the TC 4700s. Toy Store franchises like Toys Universe have introduced original variations on the character, in addition to selling the original design. Xion has been a huge fan since childhood, and uses it, uses it as the procurator for her connection gear. Orgula. Ormus Patriarch Sergius the... well, I guess it's Sergius, but... Uh, Sergius the 17th's personal battle cyborg. Oh, so she was a cyborg. Originally a specialized cyborg used in UMN transfer experiments, an accident during an experiment led to disassociative identity disorder, yielding split personalities. After subsequent adjustments, she became a battle cyborg in the Patri Patriarch's personal guard, a role well suited to her, to her aggressive personality. Usually the owner of a calm and obedient personality, her aggressive personality is forced awake upon entering battle, when she, where she becomes a berserker. Kirschwasser. The general term for the observational realians constructed by Professor Joachim Mizrahi in order to collect data to use for, Co for Momo's development. Kirschwasser is also the term for cherry brandy. Broadly interpreted, both Momo and the Kirschwassers are realians which Professor Mizrahi built for the sake of his daughter, Sakura. The circumstances surrounding their construction, however, are visibly quite different. Momo is the entity closest to Sakura and was born complete. The Kirschwassers, on the other hand, were merely tools, for the, of exper bleh, tools of the experiment, made so that Momo could be completed, and then to be disposed of. To the Kirschwassers, Momo is the subject of both admiration and envy. It is not necessary to say, necessarily to say that many of the Kirschwassers that traveled with Albedo felt jealous of Momo. The reason the Kirschwassers never left Albedo's side, no matter how harshly he treated them, was because of a strong resonance with the close yet untouchable existence in Albedo's life, and the feeling similar of, to unconditional love that it inspired. Well, that's just gross. Ziggurat 8. The model number of Ziggy's body and the general name for the for Ziggurat Industries Type 8 model battle cyborg. Different from the consumer models, this body was designed specifically for law enforcement use and features exceptional nerve impulse reaction speeds, resilience, and resistance to bullets. Of course, special machinery is required for its maintenance, and the upkeep costs are considerable. Though Ziggurat Industries has long since closed their now obsolete production lines in this area of the Galaxy Federation's Realian in this era of the Galaxy Federation's Realian technology, the individual combat and defense capabilities of cyborgs still trump those of combat realians, and Ziggurat Industries supposedly still supplies replacement parts to, officially, to official organizations that continue to choose their product. Ziggurat Type 8 models typically transfer their neural infrastructure from a realian-based body they inhabit while off-duty into their cyborg body when deployed on a mission. Ziggy, however, remains in his Type 8 body at all times out of personal preference, and does not require a realian-based body. I don't know if we ever meet any other uh, uh, Ziggurat um, cyborgs. Sellers. A colleague of Joachim who participated alongside him in the UTIC organization's Zohar research. He feels an obsessive sense of rivalry towards Joachim. 
He presently works on the development of an interstellar strategic integrated weapon system under Dmitry Yuryev, a man perpetually fixated on surpassing the heights reached by Joachim Mizrahi. And uh, I believe Word of God is that his the, the character is inspired, or not, not inspired, but uh, um, named for Peter Sellers. Sergius the 17th. The Ormus Patriarch. Though he overwhelmed Shion and the others on Milsha by using Proto-Omega, his existence was obliterated by the Testaments. Telos! Hmm. That face does appear familiar, does it not? The cutting-edge anti-gnosis battle weapon heard the posted to the Zohar Project, designed by Roth Mantel. Although officially developed b by the up-and-coming business Ganador, many of the details surrounding the company's backing remain unclear. In exchange for technological feedback, Vector allowed the company to participate in the Cosmos Project. The name Telos is derived from the ancient Greek word for the ultimate state of being or limitless power. Pesh. The French pêche translates into English as peach, though similar in spelling, the French pêche translates into English as sin. Oh, um, I don't know what the uh, different accents uh, on that mean. Albedo's am a belle pêche. There's no need to tremble like that, else you'll make me feel like a pêche myself. Is a play on the similarity between the two French words, and I'm probably mispronouncing the second one, but whatever. I, I'm. French is one of the languages that I'm least good with at uh, dealing with pronunciation of, and is making a reference to Momo's sin of being built atop the corpses of the Kirschwassers. The English translation for Momo is peach. Albedo truly is a cunning linguist. Uh, ha, ha, uh, let's not go there, please. Boss, goatee sporting owner of Moby Dick's Cafe, who looks every bit the part. His name is Stubb. He originally ran a cafe in another location, but moved to the second sector due to the area's redevelopment. Jin recommended Moby Dick to him because it features a character who shares his name. He casually began to read this famous novel and got hooked, eventually buying his own copy from Jin's bookstore. The extent of his affection for the book can be seen from the name of the cafe and its decor. His line of liqueurs are popular, but so is his curry and the rest of his food menu. He has passed a variety of recipes on to Xi'an, a regular at his shop. Whether in earnest or in jest, whenever Jin comes to the cafe, he tells him, I wouldn't mind giving this place up if it were to Xi'an. Mmm, something tells me that there's a little bit more going on there. <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, Roth Mantel. He designed and developed Telos and participated in the Zohar project, run by Dmitry Yuryev, as a special technological assistant. No data on him exists in the UMN. Several details, like how he was able to develop Telos without government or industry support, are shrouded in mystery. Cultural Android. Androids refer to humanoid robots or artificial humans. They were there were many references to them in science fiction novels during the times of Lo during the times of Lost Jerusalem. Cosmos, developed by Vector Industries, is an anti-gnosis weapon in the form of a female and exemplifies an android. Uh, the pictures down there, I believe, are of Cosmos' version 3 body. There are some who believe that an android like Cosmos is, an is anachronistic in a time when realians are the norm. Although the technology to develop Cosmos is ancient, her specs far surpass those of realians, and both could be considered androids since they are both artificial. Although realians are biological and uh, Cosmos is not. Uberhumans! Humans who had artificial modifications made to their bodies and brains during the heyday of the life recycling law, giving them certain types of special abilities, as are the offspring of these individuals, are called mutants. Um, that's stilted. Andrew, Shelley, and Mary are a few mutants. Their outward appearance does not differ from that of humans in any way. At present, discrimination against mutants is strictly prohibited by Federation law. In reality, however, discrimination and prejudice is still rampant in all corners of the galaxy. The Kukai Foundation protects victims of the life recycling law and provides them with a place to live. Imaginary Pocket While not quite literally an imaginary pocket, this term is used here to refer to the space-time cleft between imaginary space and real space. It is the location where the Elsa was trapped along with the Re with Ren Le Chateau when they were caught up in a space-time transfer. The pocket gradually grows smaller, eventually being converted to imaginary space that is immune to interference from real space. 
Curry! Curry. The four basic spi curry spices are cumin, coriander, turmeric, and red pepper. One can create a truly delicious curry dish by adding garam masala, a blend of cardamom, cinnamon, and cloves. I have actually never had curry ever, but I'm not a fan of spicy anyway, so... Xian's single-minded passion for curry is unique. At one time, it seems that it seems that she preferred to choose only the most essential spices from the plethora available to create her own blend, as well as to sauté the onion and garlic well during preparation. These techniques find their roots from the curry at the Moby Dick's Cafe, which Xian frequented in her high school days. Even out of Xian's many original recipes, her mellow English-style curry, with fruit added as a secret ingredient, was once her crowning achievement. But Jin liked his curry spicy and could hardly bear his sister's creation. It's said the two argued incessantly whenever curry appeared on the dinner table at home. Federation Emergency Powers Act. I fully expect to get uh, comments about how- <gasps> Oh my god, you've never had curry! Of that sort. Federation Emergency Powers Act. The Charter was established the year after the establishment of the Galaxy Federation. Ordinarily, it is considered a violation of Federation law for anyone, even the Federation fleet, to engage in military operations within the territory of an autonomous state, without prior notification and consent of the state government. However, this Charter allows for, the exemptions, for exemptions from such laws during certain states of emergency, such as an act of treason by use of military force against the Galaxy Federation. Also, if there is a request of relief from the Federation government to the government of outlying autonomous states during a deployment of the fleet while executing the Federation Emergencies Power Act, the autonomous governments must comply with the request swiftly. Cage Partition. Uh, this is from uh, Xenosaga 1. Various data are stored in the main database of cybernetic media in androids such as Cosmos and the artificial pseudobrains of Realians that define their existence. Cage partitions d refer... Cage partition refers to the storage space where such data reside. Species Preservation Act. With the passage of the life recycling law, people pursued their ideals and desires. They came to ignore the basic nature of genes, to add diversity in the various species. A group consisting only of species that have adapted to only one environment is a group with the same inherent weakness. Hence, they are in danger of extinction from even the smallest changes in their environment. The Species Preservation Act was established to counteract the effects of the life recycling law. It was used to revitalize and correct the track of the human race, who had become too vulnerable biologically. The goal of the act is to re-examine the transmission of genes based on the laws of nature and to fix the genetic flaws caused by life recycling. Currently, the Galaxy Species Preservation Act support foundation GPS is headquartered in the Kukai Foundation. They work to abolish genetic transformation and cloning, which are still prevalent among the upper classes and support victims of the life recycling law. Good God! Recycler refers to individuals who collect vessels shipwrecked in space, whether due to accidents or gnosis attacks, and illegally dumped objects, and who make a living selling them to brokers either as is or after making some repairs. The law varies according to each autonomous state, but this activity is basically illegal and carries penalties such as one year of hard labor and a maximum fine of 300,000 G. The reclamation and black market sale of military goods in particular is prohibited by Federation law, and the penalties for doing so are far greater than those set by any autonomous state. However, Matthews has a side job as a recycler in an, in an attempt to pay off his debts. Still, as such activity does violate the law and being involved in a crime would harm the reputation of the Foundation, Guinan has warned Matthews and his crew to abandon the, the recycler life. Cybernetic Engineering A generic term for engineering technology that integrates the human body and mechanical engineering, synonymous with cyborg technology. Cyborg an obsolete technology once popular in the age of the life recycling law, bodies of donors were revived and retained as weapons of the Galaxy Federation government as cyborgs. Ziggy was one such human who, as a registered donor, was revived and turned and turned to a, cy a battle cyborg after his death. Geocrystal. A naturally occurring crystalline mineral that was abundant in lost Jerusalem. Although it is clear and colorless, it emits a glow of rainbow colors. Even a small amount of the substance, if in its purest form, can be sold for a small fortune. Fortune, More than enough to repay all of Matthew's debts. Digbeta, an abbreviation of Digitalis Beta, and read as Digbeta. A plant of the genus Digitalis, which is native to southern Europe. Although its leaves can be dried and used as a 
uh, potent cardiotonic. It is also extremely poisonous. Ingested in quantities above a safe dosage, it can induce a coma. Lieutenant Commander Andrew ordered his subordinates to inject Digbeta during their escape from the Woglinde while under Gnosis attack. His aim was to induce the coma effect for a short while in order to hide their life signs from the Gnosis. Safe House. Safe houses are rooms or buildings for resistance types gr type groups to lay low, keep watch, and bide their time. In emergencies, they can serve as evacuation shelters. It is for this reason that they are equipped with a variety of goods suitable for a number of developing tactics or situations. Apart from the weapons and food supplies, the VLV safe house is fitted with a machine with specs surpassing those of similar devices used by the Federation government. The resistance is now stepping up its anti-UMN activities, including hacking into the galaxy... Federation and Vector's classified domains in order to wreak havoc on the UMN. I'm assuming that this is talking about wherever uh, uh, Doctus is uh, based out of or something like that. I don't remember this coming up in conversation, but I could have missed it. Naturally, such acts are performed behind closed doors, and members are always warned to keep the safe house's location highly co confidential. Absolute Standard Time. Standardized time, as decreed by the Galaxy Federation, used in the Federation capital, 5th Jerusalem. The original standard has been Lost Jerusalem time, with a div day divided into 24 hours. It is customary to choose a planet similar to Lost Jerusalem to be home to the Federation capital. Consequently, the same concept of time is carried over as well. Absolute coordinates signifies that any given coordinates remain the same from any perspective. Absolute coordinates are used when transferring ships to describe the placement and location of things like planets in areas of the galaxy lacking definitive landmarks. In the game, the Utic organization's deception that made it appear that the Durandal attacked the Woglinde was based on the fact that the Woglinde's distress coordinates at the time were the same as the, the Durandal's engagement coordinates. In fact, the Durandal, which had come to scan the Woglinde, had been battling the Utic organization's 474th Special Operations Fleet. As the Utic organization recorded the skirmish, the image of the f fighting Durandal was combined with that of the sunken Woglinde. The Woglinde was believed to have had no survivors, with the only proof lying in its absolute coordinates. Again, that was uh, Zenosaka 1. Post-war reparations. A compensation system established after the Milshin conflict that occurred 15 years ago. After the conflict, autonomous states and regions of space that had been heavily damaged, including Second Milsha, were given various vested interests and special extra-legal rights. Thanks to this post-conflict compensation, Second Milsha was able to join forces with the Kukai Foundation and earn the right to retain the Zohar emulators. However, many regions fell outside the scope of this plan, and rifts have formed between regions of space and autonomous states over the issue of compensation. Despite the creation of a compensation system, it seems there are still many wounds from the war that have yet to fully heal. Device Activator Syringe a syringe is a type of medical device used for administering injections or cleaning wounds. In the story, a syringe is used to inject Momo with a device activator when she stops functioning. A device activator is a chemical that activates nanomachines within the body. Since Yuli performed cardiac massage immediately after administering the chemical, it is believed she was attempting to restart Momo's cardiopulmonary functions. Level 7 Personality Reconditioning a treatment given to individuals who have committed a crime as a result of personality irregularities. Nanomachines are implanted into the patient's brain, regulating their thoughts and actions. The treatment has nine levels, which run the gamut from contemporary, uh, comparatively light control of the brain's neurotransmitter secretions to complete personality loss achieved by overriding data in the cerebral neocortex and followed by the creation of an entirely new personality within the brain. Rarely, some people's personalities cannot be corrected. In those cases, the subject will undergo increasingly powerful treatments until personality correction can be verified. Andrew, a life-recycling variant, underwent level 7 and 8 personality reconditioning, but neither was effective. His destructive actions toward anyone who dared oppose him grew steadily worse. Occasionally, a sort of mark appears on his forehead. This phenomenon occurs when the implanted nanomachines become activated. In other words, it is a sign that the nanomachines are working vigorously within Andrew's brain in an attempt to keep his destructive behavior in check. In the story, the reconditioning facility staff recommends Andrew for level 9 treatment, indicating that the commander is a very rare case indeed. Dummy Protocol, a network protocol used to connect the personal. Uh, connect the perspective of Cosmos to that of its operator via the Virtual Seat VR2000. Since Cosmos is a standalone unit and does not require external feed, this protocol is used only when Cosmos, while Cosmos is inactive. Central Computer Pieta 
The name of the mother frame installed in the Durandal Junior has affected, uh, affectionately nicknamed it Mama. Pieta refers to an any art uh, to any artwork uh, depicting the Virgin Mary mourning over the dead body of Christ. DME addiction. When a human consumes realian tissue, especially that of the central nervous system, it enters the bloodstream and, and is conveyed to the brain, altering his or her neural structure. Outward signs of addiction, addiction include keratinization and hardening of the skin. These symptoms have been observed in Lieutenant Virgil. This compromising of the central nervous structures alters the addict's mental and physical states. In some cases, death can occur. When, after the changes have been made, the addict must continue to consume realian tissue to stave off withdrawal septum, symptoms, necessitating a pharmacological, pharmacological intervention. At present, there is no complete cure. In regions not under Federation control, realian tissue is being trafficked as a new kind of narcotic, fetching high prices. Transfer Wave the UTIC organization's autonomous fighter units, Autotex, can gate jump independently, and their rear containers hold approximately 10 compact battle terminals. I'm pretty sure we destroyed more than that. By emitting a signal designed to uh, a signal to designate transfer coordinates at the target location, the Autotech unit can, within a limited area, rapidly transfer battle terminals from one er uh, one after another. Nataraja. Formerly known as Nataraja, this connection system was designed by Kevin and implements a direct approach. In the story, when Xion uses a direct approach for Cosmos' mainframe, this system is booted up. Nataraja is another name for Shiva, one of Hinduism's chief deities. While worshipped as the Lord of Dancing, he is also a fearsome god of destruction and creation. It is unclear why Kevin bestowed this system with one of Shiva's names. Nexus 6 Ziggy, formerly known as Yan Sauer, sent this synthetic dog to his son Joachim soon after becoming his new father. Uh, Joaquin. Uh, Nexus is the name of the company that manufactures synthetic animals, and the dog's serial number is DPA 12780094 Nexus version uh, 06. At the time, purebred dogs were prohibitively expensive and could not be easily purchased, so synthetic versions were more commonplace. It seems Ziggy named the dog Nexus 6 after its model number, but since that sounds like a robot name, uh, Joaquin short shortened it to Nex. Paradigm Contamination A paradigm is the dominating rule governing how things are viewed and perceived in a given age and field. When a paradigm changes discontinuously, it is called a paradigm shift. In the story, the term is used to refer to the desperate circumstance when a computer's mainframe or OS has been hacked or otherwise invaded. Primer walking, detecting and capturing the remaining traces of energy being transmitted by the Zohar, thus extrapolating its uh, position. Generally used to mean utilizing sequence information taken from DNA and analyzing the downstream sequences to determine the entire base sequence. Procurator, describes an AI that serves to extract user-requested data from the immense information network known as the UMN. Data is managed by various AIs within the UMN, and procurators access all of these uh, access these AIs on the user's behalf. This uh, this allows the user to efficiently retrieve the information he or she is seeking. Procurators primarily take voice commands. Keyboard commands are required when more precise settings are called for. Compact procurators also run on connection gears and other mobile devices. Xion uses Bunny, a procurator she made herself. Proprietary refers to the technology and information monopolized by a certain company. In the story, data concerning Telos's development is under the jurisdiction of the Federation Army. As it was all monopolized by Roth Mantel, even Vector's development division was unable to gain inside access. Holographic Network The neural network that makes it possible to view the data recorded within Realians and Androids as video in the real world. The, anal uh, the analysis of the why data Momo, ke Momo kept hidden passed through this network. Holography is based on the same fundamental principle as the brain's memory mechanism, hence the name. Holographic Mail Terminal A device that permits the sending and receiving of three-dimensional holograms over a network. 
The terminal's role is to take in the subject's information and voice from the sender's side and send it to a central computer. The central commuter computer converts the terminal's data into video and audio, then passes it to the recipient's computer. The terminal's function is simply to send data to send data and to pass along the fact that the central computer has received the data. Data receipt and access occur at the central computer itself. Uh, Milshan Charter, or Milsha Charter. A charter established by the Federation government to prevent a incidents like the Milshan conflict, which broke out 15 years ago from ever reoccurring. Of note in the Milshan Charter is Article 4, which speaks of the social standing of realians and was enacted because of the outbreak of realian violence during the Milshan conflict. Because of the outbreak of realian violence, the number of human victims declined. The Federation government declared realians also feel stress, which give, gave rise to the outbreak of violence, thus stipulating human rights to realians. However, even their basic rights had been affirmed. Uh, uh, however, even though their basic rights had been affirmed, Vector, the realians' manufacturer, did not remove their control devices, which contain a self-destruct code. The charter can therefore also be viewed as written permission to use said devices. Life Recycling Law. Introduced as a proposal in TC4590, this bill was approved and implemented in 91. Uh, in, uh, implemented in 91. Its aim was to recycle the bodies of the dead. Those who had registered as donors while alive had their bodies transformed into cyborgs after their deaths, but they were used as mere tools with no human rights. Furthermore, the notion of recycling was interpreted as extending to the effective utilization of genes, and the bill was seen as including human clones and genetic and or cranial nerve modification. This brought with it such benefits as broader living spaces and safety. However, with an increase in the number of mentally imbalanced individuals, people like Ziggy becoming Federation government equipment, and humanoid weapons like URTVs experiencing issues of societal standing, the act was repealed in TC 4754. Another reason for repealing the act was that, due to genetic modification, more and more people could adapt only to certain environments, and the human race was becoming biologically fragile. The number one reason the life recycling law was repealed, though, was that the victims of genetic modifications were fighting over planets with environments that could support them, resulting in a large number of casualties. Alright, events. Not actually that many. Plan 31. Now, the order the UTIC organizations gave the 474th Spec Ops fleet after they failed to secure the Zohar emulator aboard the Woglinde. The UTIC organization predicted that, in order to retrieve the Zohar emulators, the Durandal would appear at the coordinates where the Woglinde had gone down from a Gnosis attack. Composite video footage of the Durandal during fire, uh, returning fire upon the 474th Spec Ops fleet after its ambush, made to look like the Durandal had been responsible for sinking the Federation ship Woglinde, was leaked throughout space. The Kukai Foundation, and by extension the, the Milshan Autonomous Government, caught in the trap, were surrounded by the Federation fleet, and those related to the incident were put under arrest. Plan 401. The name of the plan enacted in conjunction with Plan 31, employed by the UTIC organization in order to strip the second Milshan autonomous government of their vested rights. It entails the use of, uh, of not the UTIC organization's own fleet, but a, feder but a federation forces manipulated through the government. By disseminating throughout space, composite video footage apparently showed, showing the Durandal attacking the Woglinde, the Kukai Foundation, and by extension the second Milshan government, were framed for treason, resulting in the mobilization of the Gedalia region... 422nd Fleet. Later, through operatives within the Federation, the UTIC organization proposed stripping the Second Milshan Autonomous Government of its vested rights, attempting once again to get their hands on Momo, the key to the Y data. It is apparent that Margulis, who directed the operation, considered temporarily giving up Momo to be part of his predicted scenario. Next up, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Now, uh, Disappearance of Planet, planet Ariadne. In TC-4765, the UTIC organization was conducting connection experiments with the Zohar emulators at their facili facility on planet Ariadne. However, a space-time anomaly was produced as a result of the Zohar emulators going out of control, and Ariadne completely disappeared along with its 1.5 billion inha inhabitants. While it is unknown why Ariadne had been chosen as a location for the connection experiments, it was on this planet that the experiment's director, Andrew, had lived in a sham marriage. Here he had committed murder repeatedly and been placed in a personality reconditioning facility. It may be that he specifically chose Ariadne to be the land of his martyr martyrdom. 
There are confirmed reports of fierce winds on the planet's surface immediately before its disappearance, as well as lights in the sky similar to a multi-layered aurora. It is held that only a small number of spaceships managed to escape, including those owned by the Utic organization. Thereafter, Ariadne became a Gnosis Cathedral ship, made to wander the far reaches of space. Locations! Ormus Stronghold, a free orbiting fortress over 10 kilometers in length, used by Margulis and the Inquisitors as one of their bases after ab abandoning Pleroma. It was set to be deployed in the battle against the Federation fleet inside the path to Milsha when it opened. However, it wound up being hurried, hurriedly pressed into use as a defense line against the Elsa when it tried to break through the path. Despite this, it was destroyed from the inside by ES craft piloted by Xion and the others, and was ultimately swallowed into the abyss. Orbital Elevator A giant elevator that connects a planet with a space station. It can, be made, it can make several round trips a day between a space station in geosynchronous satellite orbit and a platform established near the planet's equator. This eliminates the need for a crew to land their spaceship on the surface of the planet. Some planets combine their orbital elevators with mass driver-based launch, uh, driver launch systems. Orbital Station Totally looks like uh, um, Solaris to me. A space station that has been established in satellite orbit above a planet, primarily extending intended for the docking of ships. Uh, the cylindrical extending the the cylinder extending from an orbital station is connected several thousand meters below with a facility that has been built on the planet's surface near the equator. An elevator that has been established within the cylinder allows the crews of the ships that have docked at the orbital station to transport themselves or their goods or the goods they brought with them to the surface without having to deal with atmospheric entry. People or goods on the surface can also be transported to space in the same manner. Previously, launching ships via a mass driver was the customary approach. However, the orbital elevator system has become heavily used in recent years as a safer, low-cost alternative. A planet's orbital station is seen as the front door to that planet. Gedalia Autonomous State An autonomous state that is home to the headquarters of the 422nd Federation Fleet, which surrounded the Kukai Foundation as Second Milsha fell to the Utic organization. Rumor has it that officials in related to the Utic organization have infiltrated the upper ranks of its government, and that Gedalia's representative in Parliament has ties to Ormus that date from before the Milsian conflict. Like Helmer, the representative has a background as a high-ranking officer in the Galaxy Federation forces, but much of that history remains unclear. The state has argued in the Federation Parliament against Second Milsha's right to the Zohar, as well as against the arming of the Kukai Foundation. Although Gedalia and Second Milsha are affiliated with the same Federation, one could say that the two planets currently see each other as enemies. Sakura's House The encephalon created within Sakura's subconscious domain, a visualization of the warm home in her mind. It was used as a place to carry out URTV mental link experiments, as well as to treat Sakura. Junior first met Sakura here. For Sakura, it was the first time she had ever met anyone who could understand her words. Personality Reconditioning Facility A facility established to perform personality reconditioning on serious criminals with behavioral brain disorders. Andrew was institutionalized in this facility's building. Uh, by the way, Andrew is Cherenkov from the first game. I don't know why they always call him Andrew rather than Cherenkov, because most people probably know him better as Cherenkov. But whatever. Uh, Andrew is insti institutionalized in this facility's building, which is divided into three departments. A research lab to investigate behavioral brain disorders, a hospital ward to conduct personality reconditioning surgery, and an instructional department to re-educate patients with the goal of returning them to society. The re-education curriculum is centered around lifestyle guidance and work training. Patients with severe emotional disorders may undergo psychotherapy or hy hypnosis therapy. Once a full re-education curriculum has been completed and a subject has been acceptably rehabilit rehabilitated according to baselines set by a court of law, he is allowed to return to regular society and live a normal life, albeit under the surveillance of an administrative manager. Sunken City After the space-time anomaly, Old Milsha was blocked off from the local UMN, spatially detached from the rest of the universe. Fourteen years later, it reappeared, but the city had lost its past liveliness, and most of its surface had flooded. Exactly what happened to this land during its this blank interval is unknown. Labyrinthos, where the original Zohar sleeps, looms in the city center, barely retaining its original form. K-1 
CAT testing ground, short for the Consolidated Advanced Technology, uh, short for the, that, that the should not be there. Short for Consolidated Advanced Technology, the CAT testing ground, uh, testing grounds are contained within a giant facility located on 5th Jerusalem, capital planet of the Galaxy Federation. Many kinds of new technology are tested here, including military technology. Telos's evaluation test was held in number four exercise area, the largest section of the base, and big enough to hold operational tests for giant mobile weaponry. Moby Dick's Cafe! A cafe whose exterior blends in with Second Milsha's modern cityscape, but whose interior is tinged with a nostalgic tone. It originally conducted business in Sector 4, but moved away after the sector became zoned for redevelopment. A white whale in the sign comes from the famous novel. The interior recreates the atmosphere of the Pequod, the whaling ship that chased after Moby Dick in the story. The cafe mostly serves alcohol and light fare, but the curry it offers as an off-menu item is the secret delight of its customers. Xion's homemade curry also has its roots here, and she's been a customer of this cafe since high school. Jin also stops by frequently. UMN Administration Bureau an organization affiliated with the Galaxy Federation that administrates and manages the UMN. It has branch offices in every star system. One of them, the one on Second Mill Show, was where Momo conducted the Y data analysis. Let's pop down my air conditioner a little bit. Normally, it handles the control, administration, and customs duties for the for UMN communications and gate jumps. It also investigates and handles any incidents or accidents that occur within the UMN. The UMN was originally administered and managed by, whoops, by Vector. Uh, when the rights moved to the Galaxy Federation, the Bureau was formed with Vector's cooperation. Since it is essentially in a position where it can take hold of all of the Galaxy's information, its statements carry heavy weight with the central government. However, it is also true that 98% of the infrastructure, resources, and technicians are still provided by Vector. If that weren't suspicious... UMN Control Center. The facility that controls the UMN transport gate on 2nd Milsha. It was once a transfer gate control facility owned by Vector Industries. Even now, Vector provides 98% of the facility's infrastructure and resources. All facilities related to the UMN are essentially under the jurisdiction of the UMN Administration Bureau. Since they are in a position where they can hold all of the galaxy's information, their statements carry weight with the central government. I don't know why there's so much duplication in some of, this, some of these entries. Planet Ariadne. A medium-sized planet, population 1.5 billion, divided into three sections, a zone filled with greenery, a zone surging with businesses and research facilities, and a living space for regular citizens. The whole planet is zoned that way? That's weird. The business zone housed the headquarters of the company which focused on, ar on the artificial plant industry. The planet's green zone was dominated by the artificial plants of this business, and new types of flowers, amongst other items, were sold to the citizens of the main planets. The Ariadne flower, with its unique blue petals, was an especially popular product. However, lurking beneath all of this was an experimental facility owned by Ormus, the UTIC organization. A link experiment with the Zohar emulators carried out in this facility under Andrew's command caused a space-time anomaly that annihilated planet Ariadne, turning it into a gnosis. This event was later referred to as the disappearance of planet Ariadne, and the Woglinde was dispatched to investigate it. Weapons! The Welgunde, a newly constructed vector ship with the Rhine Maiden on board, the, three, the third ship in the line of Woglinde class cruisers. Woglinde, a battleship assigned to the Galaxy Federation 117th Marine Division, built by Vector and loaned to the Federation Marine Corps as the first anti-Gnosis battleship. The hull is about 1,000 meters long from stem to stern. That is half the length of the Jupitrus II. That's a big ship. Also, who loaned it? Vector or uh, the Galaxy Federation? Like the, the Navy or whatever their main military force is. Also, for being an anti-Gnosis uh, uh, battleship, <laughs> it, 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 it did not do so well. It was deployed rapidly for a public test run, so only the command block and propulsion unit have been equipped. 80% of its components have yet to be installed. Well, that might be part of it. Since this is a test run, the emblems and insignia of Federation Marine Corps are not present. Only the Vector Industries logo has been stenciled onto the side of the ship. Its unique structure is split into a top and bottom section. 
The top section is a command block, and the bottom section was hastily assembled from generic materials for the test run of the new logical drive. Originally, it was planned for the ship to be equipped with 100 series observational units and 100 series amplifier systems, but they could not be deployed in time for the test run. AIG's units only barely managed to be assigned. In order to compensate for the lack of equipment, Vector loaned their prototype Antinosis battle android. Wogland Day 2, a newly constructed Vector ship with the Ryan Maiden on board, the second ship in the, in the line of Wogland Day class cruisers. Uh, Jin's Ames. An Ames based on Hyam's VRA-1800B model and specifically tuned to the for the Federation Intelligence Bureau, pilot, piloted by Jin Uzuki during the Milshin descent operation. At Captain Uzuki's request, a custom sword had been equipped as a close, range, close combat weapon. Uh, Ames Scutum. An Ames made by Hyams Heavy Industries. The name Scutum refers to shield in Latin. It has been specially designed, uh, specially tuned for the use of Ormus Inquisitors and is piloted by Herman. It was destroyed in the battle with Xion's party at the Ormus Stronghold. Ames Pylum. An Ames made by Hyams Heavy Industries. The name Pylum refers means javelin in Latin. It has been specially tuned for the use of Ormus Inquisitors and is piloted by Richard. You know, for being a uh, for being named after Pylum, it it didn't actually have a javelin. At the Ormus Stronghold, the Pylum displayed its power by transferring the main cannons of the Nagelfar and destroying the inner walls of the Stronghold, but it was destroyed by the ES craft piloted by Xion's party. I especially love how it hit one of our party members, didn't destroy them, but still hold the hull of the ship behind, the, the fortress behind the... That was great. AG series. Eggs is manufactured by Hyams. Though these are provided to the Federation Army, the base frame structures, transmitters, condensers, drives, and control processors are mostly the same parts found in the Eggs used by Ormus. Its design permits modules to be swapped in order to adapt to various types of combat. Condenser. In physics, a condenser is a device that charges a conductor through electrostatic induction. Here, condenser refers to the device used to store the energy necessary to power Cosmos. There are two types of condenser, the test type and the combat model. The latter is being developed by Vector Industries' second R&D division on second Milsha. Generator. Literally, this means a device that creates power and electricity. Here, however, it refers to the main engine or power generator of ships such as the Elsa or the Woglinde. DSSS, short for Double Slit Sensory System, the, a sensory system developed by Vector Industries that can detect the Gnosis, also known as an imaginary space detection system. Fundamentally, its workings are similar to the Double Slit Photon Experiment, a common experiment, a, a common example found in quantum physics. For that reason, oh, incidentally, if you haven't l looked that up on YouTube, you should go do that. It's a pretty interesting uh, um, visual experiment, or visualized experiment. Uh, for that reason, its structure is composed of two slit-shaped camera interface surfaces. The system is equipped on Cosmos and Aegis, as well as the sensory parts of some weapons. VX series. And, of course, we get the uh, uh, picture of the VX-10,000 with uh, Xion on, on board, sitting there. Aegis is manufactured by Vector. Though a consumer-level product, its specs exceed those of the military use AG series. There are several VX series units deployed on the ELSA as well. The Flossilde, a newly constructed vector ship with the Rhine Maiden on board, the fourth ship in the line of Woglinde cla uh, class cruisers. Rhine Maiden, a vector development, uh, a vector developed special anti gnosis weapon installed on board the Damarung, as well as the three Woglinde class cruisers, Welgunde, Flossilde, and the Woglinde II. When these ships attack in unison, the power of the weapon is show showcased to its fullest. The ship Woglinde was most likely loaned to the Federation Army in order to collect data regarding the Rhine Maiden. Organizations Autonomous State Every star system has an autonomous state government, each with its own administration and legislature based on the Federation central government. These tens of thousands of autonomous states come together to form the Galaxy Federation. 117th Marine Division. The Federation Marine Division, with which the Woglinde was affiliated as it set off to investigate the disappearance of the planet, of planet Ariadne. 
Marine headquarters are on planet Tessadora, located in the most remote region of space from the Galaxy Federation's capital planet. As a result, the deployment of Anti-Gnosis 100 series observational units was delayed, and the Woglinde was made to meet a di- uh, was made to meet a disastrous end. Marine headquarters are far removed from the Federation's strategic zone, making it difficult for the Federation to execute proper oversight. The 117th Marine Division had been infiltrated by many people from the UTIC organization. Nexus, a company that developed its business around the production and sale of synthetic animals, the Nexus series. The body, the bodily structure of synthetic animal of a synthetic animal is largely composed of the same materials as a realian, a synthetic human. However, Nexus does not produce any humanoid realians. A loss of, uh, as loss of control accidents and human rights-based issues piled up around humanoid realians after the Milshan conflict, the production and sale of synthetic animals and expansion of the pet industry became a far lower risk approach to stable profits. What's more, since a sharp decline, decline in fertility has led to purebred animals being bought and sold at high prices, the family-friendly price structure of Nexus's synthetic animals is now part of the reason that the series has been continually popular for several centuries. Now oh, we've got an update to the Zohar project. Um, not sure exactly where the update is, but uh, let's just read it all again. A major anti-gnosis project implemented by the Galaxy Federation government and affiliated organizations. It originally began with research into the original Zohar as an energy generator, but the project's coverage was partially altered in order to deal with the gnosis phenomenon and its rapid, rapidly accelerating expansion. Currently, the contact subcommittee is playing the central role in its implementation. As the name implies, the original Zohar is at the center of the, the project. Salvaging it has become urgent business. The 100 series system, the Cosmos project, and the Udu system that the UTIC organization has been researching are all part of the achievements of the Zohar project. Once Dmitry Yuryev's survival had been confirmed after the space-time anomaly in Milshin space, he took command of the project and pressed Salvator faction representatives to transfer project leadership from the contact sub- subcommittee to the military. The content of the project soon took a strikingly different direction, leading to the development of Merkaba, Omega Res Nove, and the T-Weapon. 474th Spe- Special Ops Fleet A fleet under the command of the UTIC organization's Margulis that primarily takes on special missions. It is made up of several Spec Ops ships and vessels. The fleet was mobilized to retrieve the Zohar emulators stored on the Woglinde, but failed to arrive before the emulators had been taken by the Gnosis. However, the fleet was placed on standby in the area, in the area on the orders of Margulis, who had surmised that the Kukai Foundation would move to investigate and the destroyed Woglinde. It would later engage the Durandal there. Margulis did not issue a standby order to the 474th Spec Ops fleet in order to have them de- defeat the Durandal. He called for the standby to create a situation wherein the Durandal would engage something in that region, an engagement he could then record. The UTIC organization would later fabricate an image of the Durandal excuse me, and the destroyed Woglinde, throwing the Kukai Foundation and the Milshan Autonomous Government into its trap. The 474th Spec Ops fleet took some damage during its engagement with the Durandal, but still successfully completed its mission. Federation Police GFPD. As its official name, the Galaxy Federation Police suggests it is a law enforcement agency under the Galaxy Federation jurisdiction that operates in Federation-affiliated planets and regions of space. Um, d- does it include detect- Detectives uh, Kiyoshi and Mahone? Ah, oh, good God. Mahoshi and Kione. Man. That just really throws you off your, uh... Off your train of thought when you, uh, just... Transpose, uh, um... Syllables like that. Anyway. Uh, it's been a while since I've watched Tenchi, any, uh, Tenchi Moyo. Its base is a Federation Police Headquarters. It is further divided into precincts in each autonomous state. Each department and its role is fully standardized. However, there are also departments in the main headquarters that can go over the jurisdiction of the precincts in each autonomous state and conduct their own investigations. These departments handle crimes outside of regional space as well as UMN crimes. One of them, the Special Ops Command Precinct Force, used to have Ziggy in its ranks. The Federation Police's mission is to cooperate with autonomous states and their precincts to maintain law and order and to protect innocent people from crime, accidents, disasters, drugs, and so forth. 
FSI. FSI is short for the Federation Special Investigation and is the office inside the Department of Energy's Advanced Technology Agency. Really? That seems like an odd organization to put it under, but okay. Uh, Shion's father, Suo Uzuki, is a member of FSI, or was in this case. As an agency of the Department of Energy, its role is to govern and regulate the dangers involved with advanced technology. Due to the group's nature, it often deals with matters in matters with major enterprises involving huge sums of money. People frequently point out cases where FSI has collided with the political and financial arenas. Oops. Financial uh, Federation Council. The legislative body made up of tens of thousands of representatives. The high-level uh, assembly held by the legislature's senior representatives is called the Galaxy Federation Executive Committee Assembly. Unknown! Omega Res Nove. A unit based off of Proto Omega, which was recovered during the fall of Milsha. Recreated and partially upgraded by Dmitry Yuryev as an anti-immigrant fleet weapon. Though it does not house the original Zohar itself, it uses Abel as its core module and an emulator as an auxiliary, making its power far greater than the original Proto-Omega. The exterior itself is not greatly different. However, since an emulator is being used in place of the Zohar at, at the core, functionality is unstable and at a lower power output. Omega Re Res Nove can be translated as Omega Revolution. Sounds like a... Uh uh, a song from uh, um, Utena. Zohar Emulator. An emulator is something that stim simulates the operations of one computer system on a different set of hardware and software. In the story, it refers to the original Zohar emulators created by the late Joachim Mizrahi. They were used by the UTIC organization as auxiliary, original, uh, auxil bleh, auxiliary originals for the link experiments on pl planet Ariadne and elsewhere. However, the original role was to act as an ignition key to operate the original. A total of 12 were created by Joachim, each one inscribed with the name of one of the 12 apostles. They went missing after the Milshan conflict, but all 12 were recovered by the Kukai Foundation, which currently manages them. During the drill on 5th Jerusalem, the Omega Res Nove was using an imitation emulator at its, as its core that had been constructed by Dr. Sellers from Surplus Parts. It was used despite its unstable power output control, nearly causing the Omega to go out of control. Secret Data Privileged vector data that is placed inside S-Division within the UMN. Non-public information records, mainly concerning the UMN and backroom deals that have been conducted in the past, are recorded here. Xi'an cooperated with Scantia to collect this information and find out the truth behind Vector. Data on Lemegaton and Grimoire Verum and Project Canaan came from this classified information. And a pendant. A crystal pendant worn by Xion. Hmm. Town report. Robot Academy. A laboratory where the scientist Hakshin White, otherwise known as The Professor, and his assistant Scott develop and maintain Erde Kaiser. It was originally set up on the Kukai Foundation, but the Mobile Fortress Elsa project resulted in it being moved on board the Elsa, uh, without Matthew, <laughs> Captain Matthew's permission or knowledge. Since the move, more and more of the space inside the Elsa is slowly being occupied by the Robot Academy, but the crew has yet to notice. <laughs> oh, I love that. All right, that's about it. We've got 30% uh, left. We're at 70% total on the database. And, uh, you know, we'll have uh, more in the future. See you next time, everyone.